Hi everyone, welcome to IGCSE Study Buddy, where you can revise chemistry topics from the Cambridge IGCSE syllabus. If you are enjoying our videos so far, please don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel. In this video, you are going to learn part 3 of topic 2, Atoms, Elements, and compounds. Our first topic of discussion is ions and ionic bonds. An ion is an atom or a group of atoms that has either a positive or negative charge. Remember, atoms become ions to achieve a stable, full outer shell of electrons. This can be done in two ways. By giving away or losing electrons or by taking in electrons. If it loses electrons, it becomes positively charged, known as a cation. And if it gains or takes in electrons, it becomes negatively charged, called an anion. So positive ions are known as cations and negative ions are known as anions. Here's a small tip to help. An ionic bond is a strong electrostatic attraction between oppositely charged ions. It occurs between metal and non-metal atoms. We are expected to understand the formation of ionic bonds between elements from group 1 and group 7. Let's first understand how atoms form ions. So we know atoms become ions when they aim for a complete outer shell of electrons. For example, let's look at sodium. Sodium is a group 1 element, so let's look at its electron configuration first. Sodium has 11 electrons with its electron arrangement as 2, 8, 1, meaning it has one electron in its outer shell. To get a full outer shell, it has two options. It could gain 7 more electrons to fill its outer shell, but that's less likely. Alternatively, it can lose one electron, leaving it with 8 in the outer shell, which is full. Now which option is simpler? Gaining 7 electrons or losing one electron? Losing one electron is much easier, so that's what sodium does. It gives away an electron to reach a full outer shell. So when a sodium atom with 11 electrons becomes a sodium ion, it loses one electron, leaving it with 10 electrons. When representing an ion, we enclose its electron configuration within brackets and include the charge as a superscript to show the ion's electrical state. So why does sodium have one positive charge? When it loses an electron, it becomes positively charged because it has more protons than electrons, creating an imbalance. Let's look at chlorine. Chlorine is a group 7 element and has an atomic number of 17. So its electron configuration is 2, 8, 7. This means it has 7 electrons in its outer shell. To achieve a full outer shell, chlorine can either gain one electron. If it adds just one more electron to its outer shell, it will have 8 which is a full outer shell. Or it can lose seven electrons. So if it gets rid of all seven of its outer electrons, the inner part with eight electrons becomes the new outer part. 
that would also be full since 8 electrons are the most it can hold. Now think about it. Is it easier to gain 1 electron or lose 7? Gaining 1 is much simpler, so that's what really happens. Chlorine gains an extra electron to get a full outer shell turning into a chloride ion. So when a chlorine atom, which contains 17 electrons, becomes a chloride ion, it gains one electron, leaving it with 18 electrons. So the chloride ion can be represented in this way to show its electron configuration, with a full outer shell and a negative charge. Why does chloride ion have one negative charge? When it gains an electron, it becomes negatively charged because it has more electrons than protons, again causing an imbalance. Metals tend to lose electrons and become positively charged cations, while non-metals often gain electrons and become negatively charged anions. Okay, now that we understand how ions are formed, let's learn how an ionic bond between elements from group 1 and group 7 forms. Sodium, an element from group 1, has one electron in its outermost shell. Chlorine, a group 7 element, has seven electrons in its outermost shell. Sodium wants to get rid of its one electron to achieve a stable electron configuration, while chlorine desires to gain one more electron to fill its outermost shell. Sodium willingly donates its electron to chlorine, resulting in the formation of a positively charged sodium ion Na+ and a negatively charged chloride ion Cl-. The electrostatic attraction between these oppositely charged ions forms a strong ionic bond, resulting in the creation of sodium chloride NaCl, commonly known as table salt. An ionic bond is a strong electrostatic attraction between oppositely charged ions. Dot and cross diagrams are a simple way to show how ionic bonds form between elements. In these diagrams, we use chemical symbols like Na for sodium and Cl for chlorine. We show only the outer electrons as dots for metal elements like sodium or crossers for non-metal elements like chlorine. Then we show how electrons are transferred. Sodium gives away one of its outer electrons to chlorine. Sodium becomes Na+. Plus and chlorine becomes Cl-. Brackets are used to indicate the overall charge is evenly spread and the charge of each ion is displayed in the upper right corner. Ionic compounds have a giant lattice structure. It is a regular arrangement of alternating positive and negative ions. Positive and negative ions take turns, creating a stable, chessboard-like pattern due to their attraction. It's like building a strong 3D crystal puzzle. Next, let's learn about the properties of ionic compounds. Ionic compounds have high melting points and boiling points. Ionic compounds have very strong electrostatic bonds between oppositely charged ions that hold their particles together. 
to make them melt or boil you need to give them a lot of heat because those bonds are tough to break so they have high melting and boiling points ionic compounds have good electrical conductivity when aqueous that is when dissolved or molten and poor when solid in their solid form ions in ionic compounds are stuck in place so they can't conduct electricity but when you dissolve them in water or melt them the ions can move around and carry electrical charge so they become good conductors in these states that concludes part 3 of topic 2 atoms elements and compounds are you enjoying our videos are they helping you here's a way you can show your appreciation and support our continued efforts you may use youtube super thanks to send us thanks hope this video helped you please share your thoughts and suggestions in the comments section thank you for watching and please don't forget to subscribe to igcse study buddy for more revision videos bye